Really, it's for me, that's the coolest part of working online is I'm currently standing in Kentucky. I live in the United States, um, but I am talking to people all around the world in all different time zones. Uh, so obviously today uh, we are discussing the breaststroke pole and all the technique aspects regarding the breaststroke pole. Uh, so I can hopefully get you guys uh, to maybe understand something a little bit more, or maybe you just hear something a little bit differently than what you've been taught in the past. So you maybe discover something new in the process. Uh, for me, we are a very small team here at Swim Like a Fish. Um, so anything you can do to tell friends, family, other swimmers that you may swim with, other coaches, uh, that I, we exist would be amazing. Uh, if you don't follow us on Facebook, you totally should. Um, I'm going to drop my Facebook page real quickly here into the chat. Uh, that's an easy way to get in touch with me, also stay up to date with new content. Uh, I send emails, but I don't send emails as much as I do social media stuff. I'm um, trying to get better at it. But uh, yeah, there's different things for different people. Everybody, it's different strokes for different folks. So my Instagram and my Facebook is there. Um, if you guys want to share even this webinar on your Facebook page, I would so very much appreciate that. Uh, every single share goes a long way uh, when you're a small, a small team like we have. So let's go ahead and get this party started. So a uh, little bit about me. Um, for those of you I know, uh, obviously, good to see you again. Uh, for those of you that I don't, uh, my name is Abby Fish, and I'm the creator of Swim Like a Fish. So I grew up swimming my whole life. Uh, I swam, started swimming when I was four and then started competitively swimming when I was five, uh, reluctantly against my mom's wishes. Uh, and I didn't stop until I was 26. So I had over a 20 year career um, that I was competitively swimming. I did a lot of different sports growing up as well, um, but I really took off with swimming in high school. Uh, I was offered the opportunity to swim in college at the University of Georgia, um, huge Bulldogs fan. So go dogs, Jack Bowerly is basically second dad to me. Um, but yeah, within this whole kind of 21 year swimming journey, uh, I also became like a really big swimming nerd. Uh, so I was like the kid that was always checking psych sheets, uh, looking at other people's times, wondering where I ranked, looking at my stroke, just trying to figure out how to get myself to be as fast as I thought I could be. Um, so that passion that I have uh, for myself is also a passion that I have for others. And I didn't realize that the passion that I have for coaching others to be better or get to their goals uh, actually fulfills me more than when I was actually trying to go after my own goals. Uh, and I started realizing that with my first few assistant coaching jobs, uh, that I really liked helping people get to places they didn't think was possible. Um, and it's like just a really rewarding process for me, which I think most other coaches uh, can relate to that feeling. So with everything that I do online, uh, my goal is to help people get to the next level. Uh, so I wanna be seen as a resource, someone who provides good content and education uh, to swimmers and coaches. And I wanna help you guys learn more so that way wherever you are in the world, whatever your training situation is, whatever your coaching situation is like, uh, you can make better informed decisions about your own swimming uh, to get you to those goal your goals faster, stronger, and more technically sound. So as far as today's webinar agenda, um, we're going to do a technique overview of the breaststroke pull, uh, including the steps that are required to have a great breaststroke pull. Uh, then we're going to go into kind of how you would improve your breaststroke pull uh, and how everything kind of connects within the stroke. Uh, just, just because in any stroke, if you have one really good aspect, it doesn't necessarily mean that the whole stroke is going to be good. Um, quite frankly, it means that the whole stroke probably won't be that great. You have to be able to connect everything together to make that full puzzle uh, appear. Uh, then we're going to go into some video analysis of a few swimmers. Uh, I love including video analysis in these webinars um, just because it's good for you guys to see what we've been talking about um, versus me just continuing to put up slide after slide after slide uh, of lecture like things uh, and you guys not being able to identify, um, which is the next point in that learning curve, uh, what you're hearing or what you're learning. Uh, we're going to go into a special offer for you guys. Um, we've got 40 of you on here today, which is great. Uh, you know, it's the Friday before Labor Day weekend for people here in the U.S. Um, so Fridays can sometimes be like super hit and miss, uh, depending on what people have going on for the weekend. Uh, but because you guys are spending some time with me today, I'd like to offer you a special 
um, a special coupon for some Swim Like a Fish stuff uh, at the very end of this webinar. So be sure to stay tuned and stick around so you can get the coupon code for that. And then we'll finish out with a Q&A. As you guys are aware, um, one of me right now, so a bunch of you, if you have any questions or things that you want to have answered as we're going through, or maybe you think of something, just go ahead and write it into the chat. Uh, if I have a minute and I glance over while we're going through the presentation, I'll be sure to answer it. But if not, I'll be sure to answer it at the very end in the Q&A. So let's talk about everything breaststroke. Um, so breaststroke is literally the tech most technical and hardest stroke to swim, in my opinion. Um, I think there are so many different variations of the breaststroke stroke uh, that as a biomechanist, it's really hard to categorize them and saying that this is the way a group of swimmers swim and this is another way the other group of swimmers swim. Uh, whereas like in freestyle, you have a hip driven stroke and you have a shoulder driven stroke, you have a high elbow and a, a straight arm. There's all these different categories. With breaststroke, it's super hard to put swimmers into different categories. So with that, you're um, dealing with a wide range here. So when I'm talking about breaststroke, I'm talking about the things that are across the board, pretty darn universal uh, for most people's strokes. Uh, so we're not talking about the elitist elite here, and we're also not talking about the lowest on the totem pole either. We're talking about that mid range. What do most swimmers in breaststroke do uh, commonality wise and why? So because I think it's the hardest stroke, or one of the reasons I think it's the hardest stroke, uh, is because it requires some of the most unnatural movements of your body. Um, the breaststroke kick, prime example, got to have a lot of ankle flexion. Uh, you also need to be able to um, rotate your knees, which your knees are a, um, a hinge joint. So they just move up and down, supposedly in a vertical plane. But there is some give with tendons and ligaments that allow our joints uh, to move side to side if need be, if something were to happen. So when you're doing breaststroke, you're also rotating through your knees, which you don't really have a lot of knee rotation to begin with as humans. Um, so we're forcing a movement that's not natural or maybe not naturally supposed to happen. The breaststroke stroke itself is also anaerobically based. Um, that means basically that you're spending more time uh, producing lactate than you are not producing lactate. So with that, you have to be really good at training at your lactate threshold and also being able to shuttle out lactate so that way you can consistently train right below that threshold. Um, there's tons of hypoxic training that's required with breaststroke. Hypoxic training forces lactate production. Uh, and when you swim breaststroke, you are holding your breath, you are doing long pullouts off of every single wall, you're not getting nearly the same amount of oxygen that you have the opportunity to choose in freestyle and backstroke and butterfly. Um, so all aids into the fact that I think it's really just the hardest stroke to swim when you swim it well. Uh, most swimmers are born with some genetic gifts too. So some swimmers that are like really natural at breaststroke coaches, I'm sure you all can say, yeah, I've, I've had that one where it's just like, it clicks, it clicks for them. Um, and a lot of that's just due to some genetics. You'll have flexible ankles, knees, and hips, things that will really just help them set up way higher and better than someone else who you really have to teach that full movement to. I have a kid here who um, did not know how to point his toes or flex his feet out, point his toes uh, in his breaststroke kick. And it took us a long, 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 long time to finally get him to understand the feeling of pointing the toes away from the body and what that should feel like, not just on land, but in the water. Uh, and it was just literally a week ago, I was sitting on the block uh, watching above his lane when he was kicking breaststroke and it was right. And I was like, oh my gosh, this has been like such a headache. And I've tried everything in the book. I've Googled every single drill. And like, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to be as patient as I can. But at the same time, I want this kid to do well. And he finished his 25 and I was like, hey, your breaststroke is, is fixed. And he was like, yeah, ever since you told me to kick with sandals on, I figured it out. <laughs> so it was just a very exciting moment for me to know that like, A, I did something that helped him and B, not only did it change in that instance, but it's something that's like stuck with him. So now he knows how to kick breaststroke. But I'm sure we've all had those two kind of opposite ends of the spectrum where you get the natural breaststroker and then you get that really unnatural breaststroker where you're just like, all right, 
we're going to have to go to the drawing board and figure this out because every single kid learns a little bit differently and we got to do what's best for them. So as far as the steps to the breaststroke pole, um, I, I break it down into four. Uh, this is basically going back into your like learn to swim days um, where I call the first step an I, the second step a Y, third step a scoop, and then your fourth step is a shoot. Um, so step one, the I, I believe is the most important step out of the entire breaststroke pull. Uh, the reason for that is it dictates a swimmer's body line. So it allows you to take all the propulsion that you've just generated and surge forward and hold that for as long as you can before it starts reducing down to almost nothing. Uh, so the better your body line is, the a little bit longer of that time is afterwards, the after the propulsive phase, um, that you're surging. If your body line is not great, then you won't surge as long. It doesn't matter if you have the same amount of effort um, in both scenarios. If you have the same propulsion going forward and you have someone with an open, um, open arms up top, they are gonna slow down faster than someone whose arms are together. So in your eye position, um, you basically start and finish the breaststroke pull in this position. You're gonna have all 10 of your fingers pointing forward. Um, if you look at me up here in the camera, you can see exactly what I'm describing. You're gonna have all 10 of your fingers pointing forward. I like the thumbs being below the hand itself. Um, and from there, you're pretty much in a streamline. It's just not wrist over wrist, it's hand side by side. So when you're up over your head, in your um, eye position, you're basically in a streamlined position just without the wrists being over the wrists. So you want your fingertips facing down, um, every uh, finger stuck together, and then your, th your thumbs resting below um, in your eye, eye position. So as far as the Y is concerned, um, you basically go from your eye position up top to then rotating your palms away from each other uh, without moving them yet and you sweep them out to about a 45 degree angle away from each other, which is right, out right outside of your shoulder line. Uh, the goal here is to keep your hands in your peripheral vision. So you should always be able to see your hands. You don't wanna sweep out too far that you can't see your hands anymore because uh, you're gonna create a really, really wide pull then, uh, which just takes a little bit longer to go through than a shorter pull. Uh, both the I and the Y step, don't generate any speed. So sometimes you'll see swimmers really try to like muscle through the sweep out. Um, but if you're sweeping out in literally the same amount of effort in both directions, it cancels that motion out and doesn't do anything for you. So your I and your Y is really kind of like a setup phase to get into your scoop, which your scoop is the only part of the pole that generates propulsion. Um, so the scoop is a, a movement that's like a V shape so you go from that Y position to then popping your elbows or bending at your elbows and getting your palms facing down. And then from there, you scoop in towards your chest with palms coming in towards your chest, um, focusing on keeping the hands and elbows still in that peripheral vision. Um, and you sweep them there before you then rotate them together, kind of like teepee style into your shoot. So the shoot is the recovery part of the breaststroke pull. Um, so you wanna recover with your hands under the water. We'll talk about why that's important here in a second. Um, and the fastest way to get from point A to point B is in a straight line. So when you're recovering, you wanna recover straight under the water. You don't wanna dive down and you don't wanna come up uh, for some reasons we'll get into in the next slide. Once again, this step doesn't generate any propulsion. Um, for the stroke from the arms. So the only step out of these four steps that does anything for you in the breaststroke pole is the literal scoop itself. So I wrote a blog a couple, not this week, but last week. It was part one of a series on the breaststroke undulation. And I had a bunch of coaches ask me some questions on it. And one of the coaches highlighted, um, we were talking about Adam Petey and how Adam Petey has a really high tempo uh, and what his tempo is like in conjunction with how long he glides. And it was due to this article that a sports uh, physiologist wrote who was from overseas. I forget where he's exactly from. Um, but what he did was break down the breaststroke pole into the same exact elements here. Um, they're called different. It's IY, scoop and shoot for me, but he had them categorized in four different 
terms. And what he said was that Adam spends more time gliding than he does actually moving water, which is technically true because the I and the Y, you can consider that still part of the glide um, at the very top. And then that fourth recovery motion, uh, like two thirds, the last third of that recovery motion is still technically part of the glide. So that's putting a large majority of the breaststroke pull in a position where you're not really moving water. So it was a swim swim article that was written super well um, that got a lot of people to think about, well, how does Adam Petey glide so much with such a high tempo? Well, he does glide very well comparatively when you ratio, when you like literally categorize out the steps of the breaststroke pull um, in comparison to how quickly he does other steps, but he doesn't glide more than like a Kevin Cordes or anybody who swims with a little bit um, slower stroke rate uh, that spends more literal time in their glide. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty interesting. I always love reading other people's stuff um, just to make sure that I continue to learn uh, because I don't want to tell you guys anything that's like out of date or um, not quite up to par with what's happening in the swimming world. So as far as common errors are concerned, um, one of the main ones is recovering with your hands above the water. Uh, this was um, thought about for a long time with coaches because logically it makes sense. Why would you push your hands through water if water has drag associated with it and is resistance? Why wouldn't you just take your hands up over the water? Well, what they've found is for swimmers who've done this and they've done it pretty well, is that it's really hard to bring them up over the water and then not want to dive them down at the very end of that pole. Um, so instead of going straight, you're spending a little bit of time recovering from the dive down to bring the hands back up and sweep them out. Um, that that extra delay in time is not worth the little bit less resistance you get by going through air versus through water. The second common error um, kind of seen, uh, I see this with age groupers a good bit, is when they drop the head too quickly. Um, so I always tell my kids that you want to have your eyes follow your hands. So you don't drop the head down until the hands start getting out of your eyesight. Um, some kids we have when they're younger will come up and breathe and then they'll try to drop their head down as their hands are still scooting away from them. They're still pretty darn close to the body, which causes their back to have this weird arch and their arms not be to be fully straight yet. Um, and it forces them to dive down more under the water than they would if they were to like kind of lean the body and more lunge the body forward. Um, another common error is bringing the elbows too far back during the recovery. Um, I mean, during the pull before the recovery. So as I said before, you want to make sure you keep everything in front of you, which makes the breaststroke pull like the circle kind of motion, or it's really like a triangle motion that it creates uh, very small, um, which is a good thing because it keeps everything in front of you and also make sure make sure that you are actually utilizing your chest muscles and things to stay forward versus trying to come back to then go forward. So I'm sure as coaches and swimmers, maybe you've tried the, the drill with a, a pool noodle under your armpit, but that's a nice way to force a swimmer to keep their elbows in front versus giving them the opportunity to maybe push their elbows too far back. So as far as the stroke tempo and timing is concerned, um, swimmers should start on, should start focusing on their poles first, then their kicks. So when I was a young coach, I actually coached this wrong. Uh, I used to think about everything coming together as one and then everything going away as one and then everything coming together as one and everything going away as one. And I used to say brush looks like an accordion but it's not. <laughs> There's a little bit of a delay between when the legs start um, after the pole has already come, has already started. So the legs follow the arms here. Um, but yes, everything is going in at a, you know, kind of the same time, but then the pole shoots first or shoots out first and then the kick snaps around. So as you scoop in, your heels are coming up. You want to be shooting your hands forward um, as your legs are starting to snap around out back. So the scoop in, you're followed by heels coming up. And then as the hands start shooting forward, that's when the legs start going all the way around to snap back um, 
and get through that uh, propulsive phase of the breaststroke kick. The height out of the water varies depending on your stroke style. Um, we're having another webinar next month on the breaststroke undulation. So if you guys want to tune in on that, uh, we can talk more about why other breaststrokers come out higher versus some stay lower and what's the benefits to all of those things. Um, but yeah, there is a big variation in that and also reasoning on why all that is happening. Um, but at the end of the day, you want to make sure that with your stroke, you're always going to hit that body line like we talked about. So no matter if you're swimming with a fast tempo like Adam PD or you're swimming with a slower tempo, you want to make sure that you always end up in that eye position. You start an eye, you end in an eye. And as soon as your legs snap around, because your hands will be waiting up top for you, you're then allowed to open up the, uh, the hands or sweep them out to that Y position um, as your like green light go. So I call it a start position if you don't hold your eye long enough um, because your legs are coming together like the bottom of this guy's star here and then your hands are coming apart, um, which just puts you really big surface area heading down the pool. There's a couple of people in the chat that are having some issues on sound and slides. Is anybody else having these same issues or are we cruising along here? And it might be just devices or internet. Cool. All right. I, if you can't see them, um, I would definitely just sign in back again. Uh, I think we're pretty good. Everything on my end looks good. So I think we're, we're cruising. Uh, so how do you speed up your breaststroke? Well, <laughs> there's really three things you can do. Um, one, you want to increase how fast you can get through all those dead spaces or all those other three steps that don't do anything for you in your breaststroke pull. So the scoop is what moves water. So how quickly can you go through your I and your Y? And then from there, you go through your scoop and then get through a fast recovery to get back to that next scoop. So you got three steps that don't do a whole lot. One step that does a ton. How quickly can you get through the other three so you can get back to the one that does some work for you? And then on the back end, um, from a kicking perspective, it's how quickly can you set up your feet and get into that catch position so you can snap the legs back around uh, and push some water behind you. So you get like really a couple steps in the kick as well, um, but you have the legs coming up towards the bum, bending at the knees, that doesn't do anything. Then you have the knees extending back out, snapping the feet together, which does a whole lot. So how quickly can you get the knees up so then you can snap back around, knees up, snap back around, knees up, snap back around. Um, so yes, I am recording this. Uh, I will be sending out a recording. I don't know if it'll be today or tomorrow, um, but yes, you guys will be able to watch this um, later. So let's do some fun video analysis. Uh, so I have a couple different strokes here um, and stroke styles. Uh, I do that on purpose to make sure that we're kind of trying to look at a little bit more of like a gamut of people versus like the idolization of many. Um, so I'm going to play this back and I'm going to check to see how the, yeah, it's not looking actually too glitchy today. Um, so why don't you guys just take a look at her. Think about those four steps we've talked about. We've got the IY scoop shoot. And I wrote some notes on there of things that I see, but as I said at the very beginning of this webinar, I want you guys to be all also to be looking for things that you see. And if you want to, feel free to write some stuff in the chat of things that you're, you're seeing that she's doing pretty well, and maybe some things that you think she could do a little bit better. Uh, for me, um, this is one of my kiddos. Uh, we talk a lot about being in that eye position. Uh, she's been holding her stroke a lot better uh, with the hands up top so the feet come around, but she's still, still, it's smaller a little bit early with opening up the hands. Um, she also doesn't like to keep her hands together. So you can see that there's still just a slight space between her thumbs uh, in that eye position. Uh, head's going down pretty well, um, but she can still kind of shape up on those two things, hold the eye longer, and also make sure um, that she keeps those hands together. So we pretty much say this on repeat as a broken record at practice every single day, um, just to make sure that it's becoming a... Uh, not a bad habit, but a habit that can be corrected. So you can see here, we're shooting forward and then our legs are coming around, but right before the legs touch, you can see how the hands go from together to separated, um, which we want to minimize that separation until the feet are entirely together, which is right here. 
but you can tell even then by the time they get totally together, there's still a space up top with her hands. So that's not obviously an extreme starfish position, but that is what I consider starfishing uh, in the pool. All right, so here's another one. Um, this guy is a completely different stroke. Uh, he's also much bigger um, in length and also width, um, but he's got a smaller pole in general um, than she does. Uh, he has a quicker tempo when he's swimming fast. So for me, when I look at him, some of the main things I notice is that his elbows, as you can see when he comes back, are way far behind his body. Um, and so what that's doing is, geez, hold on real quick. There we go. Um, when he's here and his elbows are behind his eyes, he can't see them. So when your elbows are back, you're using like a, like a dumbbell row in the gym. You're using your back muscles and a lot of your lats, um, which breaststroke pull, we want to use more of our chest. We want to be like pulling in kind of like a, a dumbbell chest fly in the weight room. So when you get your elbows too far back, you're, you're switching the muscle groups that are working um, for you in the pull. So he's coming just a little bit too far behind his body because there's no way right there, even if his head was in the water, that he could see his elbows because they're back behind his sides. So that was one of the first things I noticed. And then for him, when he recovers, you can see how he recovers under the water, straight line, looks beautiful right now. Um, but as he goes forward, he's opening up the palms towards the sky, kind of like he's holding like a bowl of soup in his hands. So then he has to then recover and flip those palms down right at the very end that you saw that little movement here from there to here where the hands then have to flip down. So easy way to correct that, just to make sure that you keep the hands together and the palms facing more down than up through the recovery. So you don't have to have that little small minute movement at the very, very end. Um, so this is me. Uh, I'm a terrible breaststroker. So I figured uh, what, what better to use of what not to do than to show yourself. Um, I am the... I do two things of the common errors very, very noticeably. The first is I dive way too far deep down after I um, am recovering my hands. So I dive down into the water versus trying to go forward. Uh, I also scoop in kind of weird um, because I've never had a great breaststroke kick. I am not a natural breaststroke kicker. I was not born with awesome ankles. The more I trained it, it did not get any better. Um, so for me, I really muscled through breaststroke when I swam with it. And I muscled through it a lot with doing my arms um, and manipulating the pole a little bit. So I actually generated more speed from it. Um, so it is, even though it's kind of funny that it's me, um, it's, it's a good example of a lot of things of what you shouldn't do. Um, so as far as my body line is concerned, not too bad. You can see that I have separation in my hands. I'll ha also have separation in my feet, but my head is down. And then from there, I got to my, my, my Y, which is still right in my body line. That's looking pretty solid. Palms are facing away. And then I'm scooping in. And as I scoop in, you can see how deep my hands get in my scoop. Um, so I was a butterflyer. And so what I've actually found out about my breaststroke stroke is I've tried to manipulate my breaststroke stroke to be more like a butterfly pull um, because I was actually pretty good at that and to make some, get some more speed generation than just trying to scoop into the body more in like a circle. So I'm actually pulling down and then I come up to be able to get through that recovery, which is what you'll see here. So I'm down really low, pushing, 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 and then I'm up here. And then as I shoot my hands forward, you'll see as I shoot my hands forward, the tra trajectory that my hands are going is actually at an angle down towards the bottom of the pool. So because I came down, I then had to come up, which then means I shot back down again, which means I then have to come back up. So there's a lot more undulation in this uh, breaststroke stroke on the upper half from me. But because my kick is not super strong, I don't really get that extra oomph here where I am recovering my hands forward with the snap around from my legs on the back end. So once again, 
Here's me pulling really deep elbows behind my body. This is literally, this could be a screenshot on butterfly, but it's also a screenshot on breaststroke. And then from there, bringing the hands back up under the body and then shooting them down under the water, which then they have to come back up to then go back down. So there's just a lot of up and down here with not a lot of extraness on the, um, the actual kick itself doesn't give me a whole lot of uh, extra pop on the very, very end. Uh, so very last girl um, is a girl that I worked with for years now. Um, she has a phenomenal breaststroke. Uh, I put her at the very end just because her body line is so beautiful. Um, for her, we were working on trying to get a little bit more of that whip kick at the top. Uh, so once you snap the feet around, there's some people that kind of naturally bring the um, the tops of the feet or the heels towards the surface. And what that was doing specifically in this video um, is as she is shooting forward, she shoots forward and you can see here how the hands go from being at the surface to then all of a sudden they start shooting down more. So it's creating more of a downward shoot forward, which is not what we wanted. But as we were kind of playing with her stroke, that was one of the outcomes. So you can see here, her hips are popped up but then from there, she's got to kick the feet around to then get herself back into this awesome body line. But this body line on the screen, picture perfect. Um, that is an awesome Y. Uh, I mean, not awesome Y, an awesome I, um, which all swimmers should aspire to get into. So it looks like we got a question that popped through. Um, what is your opinion regarding the hand position during the shoot forward? I like it better if it's early part of the shoot has hands slightly palm up and turn over into the eye because it allows you to scoop catch longer. However, I heard some disagree because I feel like it leads to a pause before the shoot forward or a back position of the eye at the, at the back out front. So when I do, or when I teach it, this is what I teach. Um, if you look at the screen so you can see me, so you have your hands out here and then you pop the elbows and you come in. So as you come in, I want them to come in palms towards their body. And then as they come forward, it's not like a soup bowl, like we saw with someone kind of like this, it's going to be hands together and it's more like a teepee. So you have that option of still pushing water towards the chest at the very, very end, which is what you're saying you may lose if you, you know, if you decide to not do this full scoop, but if you're not doing the full scoop, you can still kind of come together. I tell my kids, create a TP here. And then from there, shoot them forward. And then when you shoot them forward, they're already ready to go for that Y position. Um, so I don't think you have to scoop all the way up to get to that, that very last or get that very last oomph, um, of the scoop itself. Uh, I do think you can scoop all the way in towards the chest and keep the hands pretty darn close together like they're clapping, um, but the palms are angled more down uh, than they are up. So what do you guys do from here? Um, so really three things. Um, the first thing you could do is work on your breaststroke pull at practice, pending that you guys are in the pool and wait for another free webinar. Um, as I said, I'm going to be doing another webinar on breaststroke undulation next month. Uh, so you guys can for sure tune into that. Um, or you can do the next best thing where you can get your breaststroke pull analyzed um, by me. Uh, I offer a bunch of different video analysis packages at Swim Like a Fish. Um, the goal is just to help you and or your coach learn more about uh, your swimming stroke. So I'm more than happy to have meetings with you and your coach, um, just telling them what I see. So it's more of a collaborative effort um, versus getting, you know, additional coaching on the side. Um, so you could definitely check out those four packages. I dropped the link into the chat there. Um, or the best thing you could do is join the School of Fish and you can be surrounded by every fish in the sea. I'm just joking. Uh, and learn every step to improving your breaststroke pull. Um, so when I launched Swim Like a Fish, um, 
the pillar base of Swim Like a Fish is the School of Fish. So as I said at the very beginning of this webinar, um, I want to be seen as an educational resource. And a lot of what I do during the day is create content for people to consume on different technique aspects of your strokes so they can learn from them. Uh, so essentially what I'm trying to do is give you guys a resource that you can go and log into um, that is essentially like a stroke clinic or a conference that you would attend on the weekend, except you can do it from anywhere um, and you could learn at any time. So the goal is just to help you guys learn more, not have to spend so much money because you don't have to travel anywhere. Uh, and you can do it on your own time versus having to take time off of work um, with a coaching schedule that can be quite frankly all over the place. So the School of Fish is supposed to help uh, enhance your foundation of knowledge so you can be better able to personalize your workouts um, next time you're at the pool. So within the School of Fish, it's a bunch of pieces of content that you'll gain access to. Um, you can either be an advanced member, which will give you access to all content that I'm about to talk about, or you can be a basic member, which will give you access to the first two things that I'm about to talk about. Um, so what I do in the School of Fish is I try to take whoever it is that logs in from step one of the learning curve to the final step of the learning curve um, about every single aspect or te technique part that we're talking about. So for this month, this month's month in the School of Fish is the breaststroke pull. So the very first piece that every member got was a technique article series on how the breaststroke pull works. Um, and so it's a series, it's normally a couple parts and you digest that, you read through it, you learn the why, you learn the steps. And then from there you take, um, or really I take, uh, the person to the next, uh, point in the, or the next step in the learning curve. And I give them an analysis. So just like, as I said, at the very beginning of this webinar, it's one thing to hear me talk and say, oh, you should do these things. You should do these things. You should think about this X, Y, and Z. But it's another thing to be able to say, okay, I know that Abby just said that and now I can see it. So the first part is awareness of the learning curve. The second part is identification. So with this analysis, you're able to identify and I'll also point out um, the different aspects of that technique piece to you so that way you're starting to associate, okay, this is what I read, now this is what I see. So the technique analysis is someone who is an elite swimmer, it's a pro swimmer, it's someone who's really good at whatever it is. So you can see how they're doing it really, really well uh, and why. So if you're a basic member, those are the first two pieces of content that you get. Um, that's what you will get every single month. If you're an advanced member, you'll get the next step of that learning curve, which is then, okay, I am aware that this happens. I can identify when it happens, but now how do I make it happen? So instead of watching someone else do it, how do you actually do it? Um, so to implement this technical change, uh, you need a step-by-step -step video to help you implement it. Um, so the purpose of the step-by-step -step video is to help you transition your new knowledge from what you've received on land actually into the pool. Um, so the step-by-step -step videos look look similar to this video right here, where there's a lot of different um, pointers and tips and things that will pop up as the video is playing, so you can make sure that you know what to aim for and what to um, what to highlight when you go into the pool. And then the final piece of content that you get is more webinars like these. So the, these webinars are actually the final piece of the learning curve where you're teaching yourself and identifying through other people um, things that they're doing well and things that they can do better. Um, so if you're a member of the School of Fish, you get replay access to all these webinars. Um, you also get um, free or priority really on video submissions. So this webinar I didn't open up for video submissions. Um, but I do, if someone wants their video submitted uh, and analyzed during the webinar, if we have breaststrokers in the school of fish or someone's still swimming and they want their breaststroke analyzed, if they send in their video, they get priority access over someone who's not a school of fish member. So you get tons of webinars, you get tons of replays, um, and you also get a chance for your stroke uh, to be analyzed every single month, um, which is a a great deal when you talk about if you get your stroke analyzed 12 times a year, um, 
it's actually a pretty solid uh, financial savings on your end. So how do you sign up? Um, well, the, the link to sign up to the School of Fish is swimlikeafish.org slash join. So I'll go ahead and drop that into the chat. Um, from there, you'll see the two different membership options. You'll see the basic and the advanced membership. Once again, the basic is just the first two pieces of content. The advanced is the last or the full four. Um, the normal pricing uh, for our seahorses, seahorses are actually the slowest fish in the sea, is $29 a month or $299 a year, uh, giving you guys a little bit of savings there for the annual option. And then the sailfish membership is more expensive because you get that analysis. Um, you also get the how-to video, plus you get all access to all these webinars. Uh, and that's $59 a month or $599 a year, once again, with a little bit of savings um, on the annual plan. Right now we are on, so the School of Fish has been around for 11 months. So we have 11 webinars in there, which is at least 11 hours of content. Some webinars are like an hour and a half. Um, so you'll get 11 hours of me talking about all these things. <laughs> and you'll also get a full portal on freestyle, full portal on backstroke, um, full portal on butterfly, and now we're finishing up breaststroke. So if those are the strokes that you're looking to improve, um, we got a ton of information on those. And then the cool part about this is it's called a drip membership site. It means that I'm constantly dripping in or adding new content to the membership site that you're never just purchasing something and that's all you're getting. You're constantly going to be getting new things um, which is pretty exciting because then it means that it's just going to, it's essentially gaining more value over time. If someone joined on month three versus you guys joining now, um, month three person has the value now, but you're getting a pretty darn good value to start with. So for you guys, as I said, I wanted to give you guys um, a little coupon special offer. And what I'm going to do is give you guys a free month to the advanced school of fish. Uh, it's valued at that $60 a month rate um, for absolutely free. So I've been doing this last few webinars and it's, it's turned out really well because it gives people a chance to kind of like test me out, see what's going on in there and decide if they like it. Um, cause I really want people to believe in what I'm doing, enjoy what I'm doing and really appreciate the content that they're getting. Um, so I figured why not just open up my gates for a bit, let you guys check it out. And if you like it, stay in it. And if you don't let me know. So it's a free 30 day trial. During that 30 days, um, you don't have any charge on your credit card. Um, but if you don't like it, you can shoot me an email and I'll cancel you out of it. And if you do, then 30 days after you start, you will see a charge on your credit card. So to sign up, um, you do have to sign up with the credit card for that security purpose of the 30 day trial. But once again, you don't actually um, get charged until day 30. So if you're interested, I just dropped the link into the chat. It'll take you right to a PayPal checkout page. It'll sign you up. You'll be able to create a login and be able to log into the School of Fish through the website. Um, this offer will be available until Monday at 11. Um, I don't let this link just hang around out there because um, once again, I want to give it to people who I feel like are really trying to get to that next best level. And I believe that that is you guys. So I'd love to have you in there um, if you uh, have the ability to do so. So with that, um, let's open this up for any questions. Uh, let me know if you guys have anything you want to chat about. Um, you can always email me too, I, or you can DM me on social media. Honestly, DMing me is probably easier than emailing me. Um, but if you are an email guru and that's what you want to do, feel free to email me too. So if anybody has any questions on the breaststroke poll, go ahead, pop that into the chat and we'll start dissecting it. Got a couple people, couple people typing. What would be your number one dryland exercise to get a more powerful pull? What a what a great question. Um, let's think about that. So, as I said, if you're doing a breaststroke pull well, you want to use the majority of your chest muscles. So, really like pecs need to be super strong. You also need to have strong delts. Um, so like your shoulder girdles need to be uh, strong as well. So 
I would say from a general perspective, if I'm not trying to be like super crazy and cool and give you some like cool exercise that no one's ever heard of, um, like a dumbbell bench press would be really, really important. Um, so having really a strong chest, you can even translate that into a push up. Uh, you can do tricep push ups as well. Uh, you can do Spider Man push ups. Uh, those would all be very, very good for getting that scoot portion um, more powerful. Head position when finishing the pull. Um, I, you want your head all the way down. Uh, that doesn't mean that your head has to be through your arms down like we talk about in a streamline, but you do want the top of the head um, at least below the surface. So if you stop videos or you slow down videos on YouTube of some of the world's fastest breaststrokers, there will be a point where all of them with their heads will be under the surface of the water. So really crown of the head's got to get under that surface of the water, even if it's just like a millimeter, but it's got to go all the way down. Girls, because you have more hair than most likely I do, um, you have to drop your head more than guys do, unless you have short hair. So if you've got like a massive bun thing that kind of looks like <laughs> one of my kiddos looked like a gnome yesterday, um, you got to get that under the water, which means that you've got to dive down more, which takes a little bit more effort. Uh, it doesn't mean you need to worry about cutting your hair or anything like that. You just have to be aware of it. So that way you can get the head down. Any tips to shoot part of the pole stronger, such more powerful and propelling forward better? Um, well, really the propel the propulsion forward comes from mostly the legs. So in our breaststroke kick webinar, we talked all about, it's like an 80-20 split in breaststroke. You get like 80% from your legs, 20% from your arms. So if your legs are not doing a whole lot, like you guys saw in my breaststroke stroke, there's not a ton you can really make up with from your arms. So you really want to work on your kick if you're looking for a better shoot forward, um, which means the setup of the kick needs to be better. Uh, the more um, you get the insides of your feet facing towards the back wall uh, and even the tops of your foot pushing down against some water, uh, the faster it's going to be overall. But the reality is, is you can't shoot forward and move water um, at the same time. So you've got to use the legs, pop the hips um, in conjunction with the legs to get yourself to be uh, faster and more powerful. Got any other, any other questions from anyone? Um, as always, if you guys could follow me on Instagram, follow me on Facebook. I'm glad to see all the positive comments. Uh, I love to see when people just appreciate what's going on here. Um, so thank you all for attending. I'd love to have you in the School of Fish. Uh, feel free to check that out. It's literally a free 30-day trial. If you don't like it, we'll cancel you out. Um, but if it is something you like, I would love to start working with you a little bit more individually uh, to get you to where you want to go. But other than that, everybody, have a great <laughs> rest of your Friday. I'm glad to hear that you guys learned something and I uh, appreciate each and every one of you. I hope you all stay safe uh, and healthy. And we'll be back in a month uh, from now. I don't have the date yet, but we'll be doing uh, the breaststroke undulation webinar next. So if you're checking me out on social media or you're on the email list, be sure to look out for the next, that next webinar. And I uh, will talk to you guys soon.